there's a conflict that goes on every day throughout homes in the, throughout the world, in particular in Africa. When we look at the issues of domestic violence, it's what I call the secret sin, because it happens in so many families and so many communities around the world where women are just, and sometimes men actually, are not allowed to live with their own free will, with their own decisions, in peace and with respect and with dignity. Well, in Nigeria, the statistics are quite horrendous. For example, over 50% of women are routinely abused by their husband. One in every two women that you see walking around the street are potentially abused by their spouse. Just to dare to disagree with what the man says, it, it becomes like it's a challenge in the home. The woman is challenging the man and then tempers free and then you snap and then there's a slap and they say, I'm sorry. And then, okay, perhaps it's a mistake. You know, he won't do it again. And then he does it again. And then he does it again. And then he does it again. Violence graduates. I got to learn that uh, it starts with the first shout, slaps, and then it goes bigger. At first, it started with a few slaps. He would apologize and say, oh, he was just upset and all. He would buy gifts. He would try to make up for what he's done. But then it would continue again. So it got to the level, it got to broken bottles, him holding on to my neck, wanting to strangle me. We face certain issues that are universal. Very often, the first instance of domestic violence occurs when a woman is pregnant. We don't know why this is so, but we do have a message that at five months, the baby started kicking, and at five months, the father started kicking too. He just saw me on the bed, he pulled, he stamped me with his feet first that I should get up. That he has been begging me to abort this pregnancy and I refuse. That today, that he wants me to abort this pregnancy and go back to my father's house, that he's not ready for children. That, oh, that now that I'm married to him, that I want to kill him because of pregnancy, because he's a celebrity and stuff like that. I told him no. He started beating me, punching me, then there was a wardrobe in our room, then I opened it, I put my tummy. So he was punching me at my back. And the pains were too much, then I collected it. He put chunk of folic acid, the red, this thing, on his hand. I should swallow it and abort the pregnancy. Then the pains were too much, I said, okay, you should give it to me. When he gave it to me, I said, okay, let me get water. Then thank God the door was open, because we used just one way to go out of the house, through the living room. Then I ran outside. I had two miscarriages during the process of this beating and beating. He continued not until my daughter was four years old. That he now beat me on the streets. That was the end. And I now told my mom that, mommy, I have to leave. And he was actually threatening my mom that, you have to take her away because I will kill her, this, that, that. So my mom now took me. I was there. I was with my parents. Then I was still in school. So I was with my parents for close to a year. There are women who stay in marriages where they get battered, where they get kicked every day because, you know, they've been told that if they, if they get divorced, if they leave the man, um, they will go to hell. But I think sometimes people should stop and use their minds because it's, it might be wiser. A Muslim man does not see a woman but as a companion that without him is remains incomplete. So he must, he must, it is a must. He must be ready to protect and maintain that woman. Violence brings more terror. Violence brings more uh, conflicts. It puts us under severe rage. So it is expedient for civil societies to come together, unite, to speak with one voice, irrespective of their race, irrespective of their color, irrespective of their ethnics, coming together to emphasize peace. Don't suffer in silence and engage with those organizations, individuals 
that are out there can, uh, that can actually help. The problem is we keep hiding things and when things get bad, it is bad for life. You start by saying no. There's nothing wrong in saying no. World insecurity is a reflection of what we do not have in our homes. If we must speak of peace, we must speak of the peace that comes from our home first because charity begins at home. It's not a slogan. It's what it is. I am not actually quiet about my situation. I tell people about my situation. See what I'm going through. Well, when I met the right people, they now said, it's not all about enduring, keeping silent, and yet one will just die like that. And there's nothing wrong or something to be ashamed of if you start your life all over again. If your happiness is what matters, and you need happiness to thrive and succeed, then why not? I hope that on the 21st of September 2012, I hope I will be alive. I hope I will be in good health. And I hope that I will be able to retain the empowerment that I have to work on myself and the people closest to me, and then the people further away from me, and my global networks, to be able to make sure that what I'm doing that day, I'm speaking out for peace, for tolerance, for complete eradication. I'm not one who does things by halves, so I'm not going to be looking for a reduction of this or a reduction of that. I'm looking for eradication of gender violence, eradication of maternal, newborn, and child mortality, eradication of war, eradication of terrorism, eradication of wickedness, eradication of cruelty, and the promotion of peace one day and peace every day.